Hey there guys and gals and welcome back to Tech by Tech. This is the start of a new year and I figured what better way to get things rolling um, than to look at this quaint HTC phone from the late 2000s. Now back then HTC was a big player on the mobile phone arena and well Android wasn't a household name and so on and so forth. This is not a flagship phone but it's quite sturdy and well built. It's got a premium feel to it even though it's not metal or uh, glass or anything exotic like that. But we'll get to the construction and maybe a quick review and recap of what it has to offer in terms of technology once we get tabletop view. This is an HTC Wildfire. But first things first, I guess I need to open it up and um, check the battery. Maybe clean it up in the process a bit. So the belt construction is actually on the sturdy side and it's impressive as it doesn't flex. But the materials are actually hit and miss. So it's all plastic fantastic all the way. Have a listen to this back cover. Interestingly enough, the back cover actually uh, works around the chin on, of the phone. So it offers extra protection. And to me, this is a good idea because if you scratch the back cover, you can just uh, re easily replace it. Well, this cover and also bezel works around the phone and offers extra protection in the corners. But anyway, that's just me. So here is the inside of the phone. Um, let me just remove the battery. Sorry, I'm not a graceful person. So I don't have <laughs> watchmakers precision here. Here it is, um, the inside of the phone. Let me just focus and zoom in a bit so you can see what we're on about. I need a bit more light here. Let me just adjust the lighting. And here it is. The HTC and uh, well, impressively, this thing was actually built in Taiwan. I don't know why that is impressive. But it is to me anyway. Now then, there's a micro SD card slot and also there is the SIM slot here. And funny enough, this thing is unlocked. Let me just clean it a bit. And we can get on to testing the device. By the way, the battery here, well, has some information on it. And it's supposed to be um, removable lithium ion 1300 milliamp hour capacity rechargeable battery. And it should give you about 480 hours of uh, uh, standby time in 4G and up to 690 hours in 5G. I don't know if that's relevant or not. I'm just rambling here as I close down this this uh, phone. And uh, really, that is it in terms of construction. Let me just turn it on. So while it gets going, I will mention a few uh, characteristics, specs of the phone. So this thing has a TFT LCD screen, a 3.2 inch uh, 240 by 320 pixel resolution with 4.3 ratio at uh, around 125 ppi density, which is not really that great. But it does offer a Corning Gorilla Glass. It doesn't say which one, so I'm guessing the first generation put on smartphones is also found here. It's got uh, Android 2.1 Eclair, but really I suspect this one is a Windows Mobile. I don't know. I will check. So since I uh, went ahead and bought a SIM card, I will try to get the pin. 
and show you that this is an actual f functioning phone. So given that this phone only cost me six euros, it's quite impressive that it's a f it is actually a fully functioning unit and I shall demonstrate this right now with a phone call. There we are, fully functioning phone. <laughs> and quite a messy tune at that. But anyway, let's talk specs. So this thing is actually a running Android 2.1 Eclair version, upgradable to 2.2 Froyo, with a Sense UI interface on top of it. And to, <laughs> to really to uh, underline this, uh, all this quaint and uh, archaic OS. I know it's an Android, but really, when I first started this thing up, I thought it was an older version of Windows Mobile. That's how different this thing looks, and that's how far we have come uh, today. So that's something to keep in mind. At any rate, it's powered by a Qualcomm MSM7225 Snapdragon S1 processor running at 528 MHz. Uh, it has 384 MB of RAM and offers 512 MB of storage. It's got a 5 megapixel autofocus shooter, which I will test right now. It also offers an LED flash. So let's see what kind of pics we can expect from this phone. Okay, so I had to insert an SD card in order to uh, fully um, utilize this camera. Uh, let's try to take a picture. So uh, the autofocus system uh, makes a sound mimicking an electronic adjustment of a lens, but that really is uh, just a gimmick, though it sounds real enough. So anyway, mixed results. Here is the picture. Um, honestly, uh, there's a lot of detail captured here, but yeah, you can see the camera is obsolete. It does handle information quite nice and renders some things beautifully. And also you can see there's a background blur, the bokeh effect. So yeah, it's pretty interesting and well, it's kind of nice to see what phones were about way back then. Uh, this thing, by the way, was launched in 2010 and uh, well, I mistakenly said this is not a flagship, but uh, from the looks of it, really, I, I sort of think that r this thing is actually a flagship, though an older one at that. So the screen size and the resolution really um, hurt it somewhat, so they diminish its importance. But anyway, I like the way it's built. I like the fact that it's, uh, well, it's small and pocketable and it looks the part. I remember this design cue from older HTCs, this line in the middle. It looks great. Um, honestly, um, I think it's a darling phone and this thing I'm, well, I'm inclined to keeping it much longer from now on, given that it's a fully functioning phone and you can actually charge it up with a micro SD, uh, micro USB cable. There's the volume rockers on the side and there's the um, power button on top and also there should be a jackport which yes it is and you can find it here on top so yeah this is more of a remembrance or um, you know a, a rose tinted glass review than an actual uh, than an honest goodness relevant uh, objective review so there you have it, the HTC Wildfire. Honestly, if you can pick one of these up for about 10 to 30 euros, 
I would really suggest you give it a go if you're into old mobile phones and stuff like that. If not, obviously, you shouldn't get one of these phones since they were pretty popular and, uh, well, they sold by the bucket full. They will not become rare anytime soon, so their value will not really increase all that much. So as always, thanks for watching and remember, I buy, own and collect, or better said, hoard <laughs> weird, quirky, obsolete tech stuff like this HTC phone, so you don't have to. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.